Delays, cancellations, rerouting, denied boarding, lost baggage, ah! <sighs> Traveling can sometimes be more of a burden than a pleasure. But did you know that you have rights as an airline passenger? Most airlines don't want you to know this, but while traveling, you are entitled to your rights as a passenger when things go wrong. Most people don't know about their rights, which is why the majority of people don't pursue fair compensation for their issues. The most important thing to start this video off is a reminder to always be polite. The aviation industry is complicated and a lot of things can go wrong from broken equipment to bad weather or even disruptive passengers. Issues with your flight are bound to happen eventually. An airline's customer service says a lot about their business, but regardless of what situation you're in, it's important to treat the service people with respect. Screaming at an innocent gate agent who only wants to help you isn't going to get you your desired outcome. In fact, it can make the situation a whole lot worse. Also, make sure you're talking to the right person before you unleash your case. For example, you need to be talking to a ticketing agent, not a baggage handler. Airlines can be greedy and sneaky, so they don't always make it simple to ask for a refund and you'll probably have to call up the airline's customer service line. Just know that even if an airline offers you a voucher or miles, you can usually hold out for cash. If you accept the first thing that an airline offers you, like a credit or a new booking, you are waiving your rights to any other form of compensation. There are, however, situations where you are not entitled to compensation, which are important to know right off the bat. These are issues that aren't the airline's fault. If the airport has faulty equipment, or if the air traffic controller reroutes you mid-flight due to bad weather, for example. But for now, let's focus on what you can hold the airlines responsible for. Keep in mind that the rights I mentioned in this video are for the US and they could be different for different countries, but it is always smart to get your rights in writing from the airline before you make any decisions. Also, if you experience flight issues while traveling to, from, or within Europe, research EU 261 to find out what you're entitled to there. By the way, the source for the majority of the information in this fine video is the Department of Transportation. Now, let's talk about the joys of delayed or canceled flights. Airlines allow you to cancel a flight you booked without a penalty within 24 hours if you booked with the airline directly. If you need to cancel and get a refund, but you booked through a third party service like Expedia, you'll need to get a refund from them, not the airline. If the airline cancels the flight when you're at the airport though, that is a different story. If an airline cancels your flight, whether that's two minutes or two months prior to your departure, you're entitled to a full Full refund to your original payment method since they are no longer providing the service you agreed upon when purchasing the flight. The reason for the cancellation doesn't matter, but always wait until the airline cancels first. Don't try to cancel your ticket yourself, even if you anticipate that the flight is going to be canceled due to bad weather, etc. Since there are no federal requirements for compensation for delayed or canceled flights, you're gonna have to read the fine print. Check out the airline's policies listed under their contracts of carriage on your online receipt to see what you're entitled to, such as meal vouchers or free hotels. If your flight is delayed due to weather, the airline isn't responsible to compensate you in any way, but you will still be able to get a full refund if the flight doesn't go. If you are sitting on the tarmac and your flight is delayed, airlines are required by law to provide updates every 30 minutes, and if you're on the plane for more than two hours, they're also required to provide food, water, and access to the restrooms. They do not, however, have to let passengers get off the plane for a minimum of three hours on the tarmac for domestic flights and four hours for international flights. If you do deplane due to a delay, the airline doesn't have to let you get back on and they are most likely not going to take your luggage off the plane. Great! 
for delays of more than one hour but less than two hours for domestic flights and one hour but less than four hours for international flights, airlines are now required to provide passengers at least 200% of the passenger's one-way fare or $775, whichever is lower. For delays of more than two hours for domestic flights and delays of more than four hours for international flights, airlines must provide 400% of the passenger's one-way fare or $1,550. For compensation, ask for cash rather than flight vouchers if possible, since vouchers can be subject to restrictions like blackout dates. Another important thing to remember is that the airline has no liability whatsoever if they cancel your flight and you miss your cruise, honeymoon, concert, or anything else that you miss due to the delay at your destination. This is why I strongly recommend that if you're traveling a long distance for something important, always go the day before and just get a hotel. Never rely on the airlines to get you there on time. Another issue that travelers experience is overbooked flights. Most airlines overbook their flights by a certain percentage because they are predicting how many people won't show up. The problem with that is that sometimes every single person who booked the flight shows up. This is what's happening when you hear the announcements from the gate agents asking for volunteers to take a later flight. If you volunteer, they usually offer a travel voucher and possibly a hotel stay and meal vouchers if you are forced to spend the night. Be sure to be very clear on what the compensation is before you volunteer, since once they've pulled you from the flight, you would not be able to get your seat back if you already agreed to volunteer. Unfortunately, there are circumstances where you may be involuntarily bumped from your flight due to overbooking. If you check in on time and get seat assignments and you're on the flight on time, you'll have a much less likely chance of being involuntarily bumped. It is never a good idea to wait until the very last minute to board the flight because there's a possibility that someone else is holding a ticket with the same seat number as you and bottom line is that the first guy in the seat gets to stay. But if you are the unfortunate last person and you are being involuntarily bumped, you have the right to ask the airline to explain your rights in a written document. You get a full refund and you're entitled to compensation although there are certain exceptions. If the airline can get you to your final destination within one hour of your original flight time, they don't have to compensate you. However, if you arrive at your destination more than an hour late, passengers can get as much as double the price of their ticket, so make sure to use your rights and speak up for yourself. Ah, denied boarding. Be aware that an involuntary bump is very different from being denied boarding. There are many reasons why you could be denied at the gate, but the most common reason is that a passenger is too drunk to get on a plane. If the gate agent can smell alcohol or notice that a person is acting inappropriately, they have the right to remove them from the flight with no compensation. My biggest pet peeve while traveling is lost baggage. It is incredibly inconvenient. So before checking your bag, make sure that you have no real valuables inside of it like cash, credit cards, cameras, medicines, jewelry, passports, you name it. If it is extremely important to you or irreplaceable, put it in your carry-on. When checking your bag, make sure that all those little white stickers from your last flight have been removed since it could be scanned accidentally and cause the bag to be routed to the wrong destination. I also make sure to have my name, address, and phone number on the outside of my bag as well as on the inside. Having an Apple uh, AirTag inside your bag is also a pretty great way to keep track of your luggage. 
any issues at all that you might have with your baggage must be taken care of at the airport's baggage claim when you arrive. If you leave the airport and try to deal with the issue later, you have lost your rights to compensation. The airlines will also treat you differently if you're arriving on a trip versus if you're just coming home. During my trip to Egypt, for example, my bags were lost and I was able to bill the airline for some new clothes and bathroom stuff that I needed to buy since I had nothing until they found my bag. Most airlines will also provide you with an amenities kit with a toothbrush and toothpaste, soap, etc. also if you ask. Most people don't know this either, but if you can't wait around and you end up being too far away from the airport, most airlines will deliver your bag to you. I was once in Iceland and the airline lost my bag and two days later they delivered my suitcase to the middle of nowhere to a hotel where I was staying. If your suitcase has been damaged by the airline, they can sometimes compensate you for the depreciated value of the bag, especially if you have before and after photos. If you believe that something has been stolen from your bag, you'll need to file a claim as soon as possible by calling the airline. Unfortunately, the airlines will not always help you with this situation, so the best thing you can do is to not have anything too valuable in your suitcase in the first place. Alright, I hope this mini lecture on airline passenger rights and what the airlines don't really want you to know has been helpful. Uh, it's given to you by a woman with a fancy hairdo and a nice silky shirt to make me feel like a professional, but in reality, I'm actually so glad I recently got a teleprompter because this stuff would have been pretty difficult to memorize, which is why it's always so important to ask for all of your rights in writing so that you can make the best decisions once you're knowledgeable on what you have a right to. I'll include some helpful links in the description to learn more about your passenger rights, including the EU and Canada, as well as the Department of Transportation complaint forms in case you have any of your rights that aren't properly being upheld. Don't be indecisive or intimidated when it comes to speaking up for yourself to airlines. Acting quickly on your situation is essential. Whether you want to be compensated or if you need to be rebooked on another flight that's filling up quickly. If you're ever in a long line also trying to get something fixed with your flight, I recommend also uh, calling the international helpline simultaneously because sometimes uh, reaching the airline over the phone can be uh, quicker than waiting in a plane full of people in line. So let me know in the comments if this video was helpful or if you have any other advice for travelers in the Limitless Army so that we can all have the best travel experiences possible. Thank you for watching and until next time, keep pushing your limits.